All right, so this is LaserFest, and I'm going to be showing you how a laser works using a helium neon laser. So this is our helium neon laser. It has been taken out of its usual encasement so that you can see how it's working on the inside. Right here is a gas tube, is a tube filled with the gases helium and neon. Now, this tube uh, contains those gases in excited states that are pumped up to these excited states using a current on the inside. A current flows through this tube and excites those atoms to excited states which then want to spontaneously de-excite and drop back down to their ground state. When they de-excite in that way, they spit off photons, which are called little packets of light. Now these little packets of light are then spread out in all directions. What we want is a single direction. So we put two mirrors at either end of the gas tube and the photons that just happen to be going in the perfect horizontal direction are going to be reflected many times within that ca cavity and as they go are going to continue to excite more atoms within the gas. Now as they excite more atoms, those atoms spit off yet more photons and we gain an amplification effect. Now this amplification effect is then um, utilized because we make one of the mirrors at the end just slightly less than perfectly reflective. This slightly less than perfectly reflective allows a little bit of the light that's constantly bouncing off of it to be transmitted and we get our laser beam that goes out to the side. So one interesting part of lasers is that the decays from an excited state to a ground state can actually happen between several excited states and the ground state so that we get a few different colors within the laser tube. Now these colors are quantized because the energy levels are quantized so you always get the same colors for the same gas. But as we know you only get a single color in the laser beam that comes out. This we do by making the mirrors that we use on either end um, well very close to perfectly reflective for only a certain wavelength. These mirrors are very, very, very well reflective for the red wavelength, which creates our red laser beam, but they're not reflective for blue, green, yellow, and other colors, which means that those colors, the photons that are those colors, can simply escape out and are not amplified within the cavity. Um, one aspect of lasers that's interesting is the patterns in the laser beams that you often get. Uh, now, we have put a lens on top of our, la on our laser beam so that we spread out the light and you can see in there that there's some internal structure in the laser beam. This is caused because of the different path lengths that the photons can travel before they um, escape through out of the cavity. These path lengths are only slightly different because almost all photons are going perfectly horizontally but they can take slightly different um, paths. These paths, once they escape out of the slightly less than perfectly reflective mirror, interfere and this interference is what you see as the internal structure there. Now I'm going to move one of the mirrors just a very, very slight distance and you'll see that the internal structure changes. You get more or less dots. And this is because I'm essentially changing the path length that the different photons are moving and in so doing changing the interference pattern associated with them.